Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 2nd regular meeting of the Hungry Rail School Division Board of Trustees. We begin with our land acknowledgement uh, and Trustee Seminola. The Rural School Division brings together a community of uh, schools on the traditional land of the Inishina Abek, Ininua, and Dakota. Our division is located on the national homeland of the Red River Metis. We have, oh, <laughs> <somebody> moved it. <laughs> uh, we expect the treaties that are made um, on this land and acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and present. We dedicate ourselves to authentic alliances. Um, with indigenous communities in the spirit of uh, reconciliation and cooperation. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, welcome to those of us joining on those of us those joining online and uh, in person today. Uh, just to let you know that we do record this meeting to ensure that our minutes are captured accurately. We have time at the end of our meeting for questions to be asked about anything on the agenda, and certainly if you have questions that are pertaining to items not on the agenda, you can reach out uh, by emailing info at lrsd.net. Our vision is for all members of our community to excel as caring, confident, capable, and resilient lifelong learners who contribute to a democratic and sustainable world. And our mission is to provide a safe, inclusive, and engaging environment where personal and collective learning are valued and each one of us reaches our full potential. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda for April 2nd. I need a friend seconder, please. Trustee Nordheim, second Trustee Simoniola. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. I neglected to mention that we have regrets this evening from Trustee Kolachek and Trustee Turner. And I'm sure I would like to I would like to apologize to this group and uh, the member of the public. I did uh, uh, after the screen moved. I did uh, neglect to mention that we recognize that Manitoba is uh, also the traditional land of the Nation Inuit and Dene. So I would I'd like to uh, apologize for making that error. And hope that's great. Thank you Thank very you. much. Next item is to approve the minutes of our March 19th regular meeting. They've been distributed. I've had no indication that there are any corrections needed. So we will accept them uh, and archive them accordingly. <coughs> News from the Board of Trustees comes from yours truly this evening. And I have props. So ready? First item is related to students in the formerly Junior Achievement Manitoba, which is now JA Manitoba. We've had a number of schools that have participated in this program over the last number of years. Um, a little earlier in the year than normal, they have uh, this year two trade shows where they sell their wares. One is at St. Patel Center. And then uh, two weeks later, there is one held in, at Kildonan Place. Um, this year, Nelson McIntyre Collegiate made Turbert which is a bird feeder that has suction cups on the back so that you can attach it to your window and watch the birds come and feed right from the comfort of your own home, as it were, up close and personal. Um, Windsor Park Collegiate this year had a product called Rewaxation, which was uh, scented candles that they made. And then J.H. Bruns Collegiate had Q Rhythm, which was a bunch of keychains that they made in different sizes that contained a code to Spotify where the um, soundtrack of the musical would play. This particular one is from uh, Wicked. So they were a very engaging group, had lots of answers related to costs of their products and, and profit margins and uh, the amount of time that everything took. And each of these um, groups supports a charity with their proceeds. Um, so it is a, also an opportunity for them to give back. They're learning some entrepreneurship and uh, marketing and promotions and social media skills, and they're all on um, Instagram if you're interested. The other uh, story that I would share tonight is students in the cake and pastry program at the Arts and Tech Center. 
held a cupcake competition on March 22nd. You can see some of the samples that they made again on ATC's Instagram feed. There are all sorts of pictures. This is, this is three of about 10 of them, but I like the, the center one is like a little cupcake garden with some carrots and nuts and stuff growing. And there was all sorts of very creative uh, cupcakes made and then in some cases combined to make bigger bigger as it were so it was um i thought it was just it was just a real feast for the eyes so and perfect for this time of year so that's my news for this week uh news from the senior leadership team and uh, Deneen, how did i do this last time to know it was come out oh, there we go from assistant superintendent Kadev. sorry thank you I'm pleased to bring uh, news this evening from the Collegian Sauvé and J.H. Brent Collegiate Families and Schools. I'll start with Ecole Saint-Germain. On March 14th, Saint-Germain was honoured with an invitation to the Legislative Building, thanks to a member's statement by MLA Mike Moyes. This invitation not only provided an exciting opportunity for the Saint-Germain students, but also highlighted the school's dedication to creating the UN Sustainable Development Goals into daily activities at the school. Uh, leading this effort is the teacher, Madame Jennifer Engbrecht, who has facilitated the school's participation in initiatives such as Oceans North, school-wide composting, the Monarch Teachers Network, and the Youth Climate Symposium at the Human Rights Museum, among many others. And this year, St. Germain is proud to announce its designation as a Learning for Sustainable Futures school, marking their engagement in shaping a more sustainable future. So here's a picture of all the kids with... Uh, MLA Mike Moyes and uh, Madame Engbrecht is in the back at the far left. And next, uh, I wanted to share some news from Shamrock School on the Professional Development Day on March 15th. Uh, their focus was uh, an ongoing effort to promote belonging. And the objective for the day was to deepen their understanding of anti-racist education, establish a shared vocabulary that supports anti-racist and anti-bias initiatives, and engage in practical lessons on anti-racist uh, and anti-bias uh, education that they will implement in their classrooms. Uh, the day was highly enriching for the staff. Uh, Assistant Superintendent Michel Jean-Paul uh, was also there, and she delivered an inspiring message to kick start the day's activities. Staff members then participated in three rotating sessions focusing on identity, microaggressions, and developing a common language to address racism. And in the afternoon, they collaborated on brainstorming various scenarios related to personal experiences with racism. And the day of learning and reflection was profound and thought provoking, uh, but the school team is eager to continue their work and learning in this important area. And finally, I've got stories from two of our high schools, uh, Jean Sauvé and J.H. Bruns, who both presented the musical Mamma Mia. Uh, the Jean Sauvé group uh, had a highly successful experience presenting at the Burton Cummings Theater on March 11th and 12th. Uh, their production involved 140 students, uh, both on and behind the scenes, in preparing for this presentation. They did three shows, and in the afternoon of one of the days, they attended to their three feeder schools. They had uh, 2,300 tickets uh, sold during those three performances, and uh, 670 went to the students. And for Bruns, they did their presentation just before spring break, uh, also with many, many students involved in preparing and performing and supporting the work that happened on stage. Uh, art artistic director Justine Phipps and music director Marty Cashin were extremely proud of this incredible production. An incredible strength of Bruns shows is that the students take on leadership roles, the backstage marketing, costumes, house management, and stage management are all student run. And Mama Mia is a show that takes a village to produce and many staff members and alumni pitched in to make it a huge sold out success for their shows. Uh, this show uses the legendary ABBA music to tell the story and has become a worldwide sensation that has audiences up on their feet and singing and dancing all along. I hear they were singing on their way out the door. So congratulations <laughs> to our high schools and their wonderful work of bringing their students together to showcase their talents and interests in these very uh, incredible uh, presentations. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we have one committee report this evening from the Re-Elevate uh, Re Endowment Fund Committee. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just wanted to uh, update the uh, community. We had uh, initially um, had talked about doing a fundraiser or some of a musical presentation uh, with all the high schools in, involved. It was uh, originally planned to be held on April 11th. Um, that event has been canceled for this school year, at least. More information on uh, future fundraisers or other 
uh, events organized by uh, the committee. Okay. Thank you very much for your update. Uh, item number six is information from the chair. A couple of things, uh, starting with the annual Manitoba School Boards Association conference in AGM, which took place um, two weeks ago. Uh, there were four trustees that attended all their close. Oh, did I miss something? Yeah. Uh, oh second. boy, I blew right past staff. <laughs> um, all right, let's go back to item number five, uh, personnel update uh, new requests. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Uh, Nicole Maynard. Uh, Principal at Ecole George McDowell has requested a leave uh, effective January 2025 uh, and um, uh, forward to the board. Okay. So the recommendation then is that the board approve the leave request made by Principal Nicole Maynard at Ecole George McDowell School from January 1st, 2025 to June 30th, 2025 without pay. I need a mover and a second, please. Trustee Gary, your second, Trustee Simoniola. All those in favor? Any opposed? <laughs> and the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, next update is uh, appointment of a vice principal at Nelson McIntyre. This evening, I'm uh, sharing with the board that after um, uh, thorough interview process, bringing forward the name for vice principal at Nelson McIntyre of Ali Erickson, Allison Erickson. So the recommendation then is that Allison Erickson be appointed as vice principal at Nelson McIntyre Collegiate immediately. I need a move for a second, please. Moved by Trustee Garrier, second by Trustee Nordheim. Trustee Palmquist, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> All those in favor? Any opposed? And the motion is carried. Thank you. With congratulations to Allison on this new opportunity, challenge, and role for her. She's an internal uh, Catholic, correct? All right, let's try this again. Manitoba School Boards Association uh, Conference in AGM was held uh, two weeks ago. We had uh, four trustees who attended. And uh, part of our uh, professional development uh, process is for those in attendance to share some of their takeaways. So we'll just go around. Would you start, uh, Trustee Sigurdsson? Yes, thank you. It was uh, very valuable. Uh, it was a two-day event. I was work requirements. So I was only able to go to the, the Friday. Uh, it's always valuable to meet with uh, trusty colleagues from other divisions and uh, rekindle those relationships and get um, uh, swap ideas. And uh, it's always a very valuable uh, experience every year. And especially we have our uh, regional meetings to take place where we have the members from uh, uh, the metro region. And we had a very valuable uh, discussion with the uh, uh, trustees from the groups. We also had a number of, um, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, with the votes with the uh, proposals. Resolutions. Uh, resolutions, sorry, I couldn't, couldn't get the word. <laughs> the resolutions, we had the. Uh, but a lively debate this year, which is very, uh, very encouraging uh, on many of the res resolutions. Thank you. Trustee Seminola? Yeah, I was, uh, I was there on the second uh, on the second page to add on to what Trustee Sigerson said. In one of those original meetings, we were to see the engagement of the of, uh, pro region in, the, in our area. Um, here, I think we one went through. One went through like one thing on the agenda that was brought up. That's how engaged everybody was, and about liaison with um, with our own uh, government officials within our area, and and a lot of great ideas that came out of that. And some good takeaways as well on the next step. Um, and I'm always excited that one of the people sit on that committee sits on this table, so we're very proud of that as well. Thank you, that that's in our hand. Yes, Mr. Palmquist. So I was unable to attend much on Friday, but uh, was there for the full day Thursday. Um, but certainly the highlight uh, for me was the uh, session I attended with the, the um, superintendent of Winnipeg School Division, Matt Henderson, and that was very interesting presentation he gave with respect to um, uh, suspensions and out of school, uh, uh, the, the, the socioeconomic and cultural implications of suspensions. 
uh, the categories of students which are uh, suspended most often and what the message that sent to students and families uh, oriented by a suspension from school um, probably was most kind of ke what connected deepest about it was the, the suggestion that community is that antisocial behavior root is rooted in many respects in alienation from community and or someone who is demonstrating antisocial behavior to um exiled or um uh, removed from community is uh sort of philosophically counterintuitive to that approach now uh he of course acknowledged that there's tremendous um logistical um human rights um worker safety um and and very serious nature of some of the disciplinary infractions but uh a deeper examination of Winnipeg School Division statistics revealed uh, to them that there was more at work uh, than simply a, an equal application of, of discipline and of suspensions to students across different racial categories, socioeconomic categories. So it was a very, very fascinating and moving presentation, and that was uh, that was highlight for me. Thank you. Christy Dorkheim. Uh, yes, it was an, a great opportunity and I appreciated it um, very much. The um, thing that I took away on a personal level was in, in one of the sessions with Reverse Transcona. Um, I have spent a lot of time at these board meetings here reminding myself that I am in terms of a role focused on governance now, not on operations. And so Often I realize that I'm coming, I thought I was coming close to uh, crossing over a fine line and it was brought to my attention there just for um, thought provoking um, issue that it's actually a gulf between governance and uh, operations and that there really have to be jumping hard to make sure that uh, to to make sure you're you're not crossing over and so that was interesting in terms of uh, that personal growth part and then the other thing that i thought to bring back to this board is as we're discussing norms and and how we work together was the idea of learning session um that um it was less of a presentation and more of a discussion format for everybody to be learning together senior admin and trustees with uh, lots of opportunity for questions and, and debate. And I really appreciated that idea and that's something I'm, so it was a personal growth moment and hopefully a board growth moment uh, at some point. I would agree that it's uh, with, with what uh, the three of you have shared, it's an excellent opportunity for um, engaging and connecting with boards across the province or getting to know our trustee colleagues and some of the unique challenges that they're facing even while we all try and, and uh, hurdle some of the same very high bars. Um, I was appreciative that uh, Mr. Altamare, Altamare gave up some of his time to, uh, to chat with us um, and certainly uh, the opportunity for um, you know, a bit of uh, conversation and, and work around uh, the role of, of the association um, in support of member boards is always important. I would uh, take this opportunity to um, let everybody know who may not at this point um, is that Irene was elected uh, to the MSBA executive as one of the two directors of Region 5, which comprises all of Metro Winnipeg with the exception of Winnipeg School Division. Um, she was acclaimed, which is, uh, in this particular case, I think, um, a, a, a nod to your uh, capacity and capabilities and your reputation, which preceded you. And uh, I'm very grateful that you are on the executive. Um, this board has now four members who have uh, roles within MSBA, and um, that's, that's pretty great. So uh, kudos to to you and to Darlene, who serves on committee, to Paulo, who serves on the MUST Fund. Um, 
you know, those uh, perceptions and perspectives that you bring and then bring back here are going to be important. So congratulations, Irene, and thank, thank you for uh, hand up. Um, before we move on, the only other thing, chair information, I would, uh, uh, this is the, by now, hopefully the worst kept secret is the federal government's commitment to a national uh, nutrition program, something that many people have been lobbying for. I'm not so naive as to think that the joint letter that we wrote, I guess back in February, to Minister Freeland asking her to uh, consider this in the upcoming budget and offering a little bit of LRSD context in the process had anything to do with it. But um, I am very glad in hindsight that this board supported uh, the writing of that letter because it is a way for us to demonstrate um, that that commitment is important to us and that we will always uh, put pen to paper when we feel uh, the opportunity is there and uh, tell a bit of our story while we're asking for um, them to consider a, a decision that they're, that they're looking at. Senior leadership team information to the board. Uh, first item is an update on the by-election in board one that is set for June 6th. 6th or 4th? 6th. <laughs> one of the two. 6th, yep. yes. Thanks. I will uh, just share some uh, information. Um, so I just want to share with uh, the board and the public today um, as we're getting closer to uh, our by-election for Ward 1 on uh, June 6th, uh, we have some key milestone dates that I want to bring to everyone's attention. Uh, the first, which has already passed, is the launch of the website on the city uh, Winnipeg. And so information regarding um, voter eligibility, uh, nomination process, and um, filing nomination papers, um, all things by election, you can uh, visit the City of Winnipeg website and we have a dedicated page that will provide the public with all the information they need. So some key dates uh, for anyone, any prospective um, people running, the uh, filing nomination papers will take place between Thursday, April 25th at 8.30 a.m. to Wednesday, May 1st, uh, up until 4.30 p.m. And uh, for any prospective uh, candidates that are filing papers, uh, information packages uh, will be supplied to each candidate who files a nomination paper. Uh, next key date is May 6th. Uh, this is the public notice of election. So the public notice of by-election, including names of nominated candidates, Hours of voting, advanced voting, voting by sealed envelope ballot will appear in newspapers. So that's uh, where the city will communicate to the larger community um, all that information. Voter notice mail outs will start uh, beginning on May 17th. And then other key dates are the advanced polling and the locations. And so uh, City Hall will have an advanced poll station. And that is at the Susan Thompson building, the City Hall building downtown. And this uh, can be done at the City Clerk's reception desk from Thursday, May 9th to Monday, June 6th, between the hours of 9 and 4 p.m., 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. There will be an advance poll at the uh, hospital, St. Boniface Hospital, on Monday, May 27th from 10 to 2 p.m. Those are for patients, residents, staff, and visitors of the um, St. Boniface yeah. Hospital. We have various uh, polling stations for residents in our uh, seniors complexes. And uh, I have a list here, but that is happening um, depending on location from May 27th uh, to May 31st at, uh, I think there's eight locations, One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight locations, and that's extended to the residents only. And then finally, the, the for the uh, greater public, the advanced polling, um, that'll be held at the Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center on Wednesday, May 29th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., Thursday, May 30th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., and Saturday, June 1st from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then on election day, we have four sites that have been planned. Uh, Ecole uh, Ari Bergeron, uh, Nelson McIntyre Collegiate, Louis Riel Arts and Technology Center, and Windsor Park Collegiate. 
and that takes place Thursday, June 6, uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then finally, declaration of the by election results will occur by the senior election official on February, uh, on Friday, June 7th. Deadline for application to the Court of uh, King's Bench for any challenges for the by-election is three days after the result is officially declared, as well as there is information regarding uh, voter eligibility, uh, the nomination process, as well as filing nomination papers, which, uh, like I said, are on the City of Winnipeg website. So that's the report that I'd like to present to the Board and today. Great. Thank you. Any questions? Anything you're curious about? Are the, the candidates uh, that are nominated uh, before May, listed before May 1st, or does the list of only get published after the nominations close? After the nominations are closed, I believe, and that will be part of the May 6th. Um, May 6th. Right. So, th so that's different from the general election where they were. Okay. It is, it is different because normally you would just come if you register, if you, once you file your papers, you'd be on the list. And then subsequently every day that will be added until finally. I'd have to find out the, the minutia of that. But the, the information that I gave was that filing papers May 1st and then public notice on May 6th. So, but I that would be the final ballot, though. I'm just yeah. They would, yeah. Generally speaking, they list who's, who's qualified. But, Sorry to interrupt. Yep, no, no, that's okay. It might be different for violence. Yeah. Sure. yeah, I can find that out. Um, second item roadmap for fully kindergarten as we continue down this path. Just wanted to provide the board uh, an update on uh, the next steps to uh, implementing fully kindergarten LRSD. So we've sent out communication uh, similar to the um, spotlight story that uh, the treasurer has uh, put up on the screen, is sharing with everyone online, uh, welcoming uh, parents who've registered their children for kindergarten to full day K. More time to discover, learn, grow, and think. And um, we're uh, we're and so we're updating this mail list that, that uh, so that uh, parents, as they register their children for kindergarten, uh, receive an initial uh, communication uh, and uh, and request for information. So we are uh, we've received from. Um, over 600 families so far uh, responses to a survey um, where we're asking some essential questions about uh, their needs relative to uh, kindergarten and uh, before and after school care. And uh, that collection of information <clears throat> is going to help us um, engage in um, meaningful dialogue with everyone. Uh, and that includes our child care providers in our schools and uh, outside of our schools and serving our community. Um, that uh, dialogue is going to start earnest uh, tomorrow evening at Ecole Sage Creek School and through the month of April at uh, uh, Ecole Van Bellingham and Island Lakes Community School. Uh, and as I said, with our child care providers in uh, this month of April, the course of the next um, two to three weeks. Um, and, um, and so why these schools uh, and not others? Uh, we've identified three schools where we do have to bring families together uh, that have uh, registered children for kindergarten to talk about uh, the challenge we have relative to space in these schools and uh, solutions we want to consider for next year. 
before we come to a final decision about uh, the best solution to, uh, to provide uh, full day kindergarten to families in these schools. We do intend to have a, an information in the evening for all parents uh, with, with children registry, uh, registered for kindergarten next year. Uh, and that invitation will go out later and, and will be for uh, a later date, maybe late April or early May. Um, staffing is, uh, of course, an important part of uh, this implementation. And um, folks may have noticed a general posting that's been advertised. Uh, we're leveraging social media to get the word out. And um, and we as a board looked at um, uh, what has already come in uh, with respect to interest for this open posting. And it looks very reassuring and promising. Uh, so that's teacher staffing. We're also going to have to uh, concern ourselves for uh, uh, staffing uh, uh, paraprofessionals that support school day kindergarten as well. So you'll see more about that in the weeks ahead. Uh, when thinking of staff, uh, their learning for next year is also um, being planned for. Uh, we're uh, going to put together a, uh, a learning plan, learning opportunity for teachers and, and uh, educational assistants relative to uh, full day kindergarten. And that will be shared in the in the weeks ahead. And, and so this would be staff learning in the this spring and the coming months in anticipation of September. Um, of course, teachers and students need to be in spaces together to learn. And so we're also looking at the infrastructure needs related to the expansion of full day kindergarten furnishing needs, technology, and resources. Uh, and finally, we are also thinking about the evaluation plan of this initiative. We, um, last week, some of us on senior leadership met with researchers in Ontario to learn from their experience, uh, researchers that were involved in that uh, province-wide initiative of implementing full-day kindergarten for four and five-year-olds. And uh, and so they're very much interested in being a part of the journey with us, supporting us. Uh, we we'll, we will look, of course, to academics that are in Manitoba to also be a part of this uh, journey to evaluate the impact of this. That is uh, the essence of my update today. Any questions, trustees? Right, we are on our way and uh, we'll watch for updates as they come. Uh, lots of work to be done, but we're off to a good start. So, next item is uh, related to information that has come from the department regarding increased accommodation requests in Manitoba schools uh, through the superintendent to assistant superintendent for backups. Thank you. On March 25th, we received communication from Manitoba Education and Early Learning reminding us and clarifying the provisions that exist for religious accommodations in Manitoba's public schools as per the Public Schools Act and the Religious Exercises in School Regulation. And so uh, the department has put out um, a very thorough document that provides supports to schools and parents and community called Responding to Religious Diversity in Manitoba Schools, a guide for educators, which provides um, the details required to support families and school leaders and teachers as they um, consider a request for accommodations due to religious reasons. We're currently in the process of gathering information from school regarding uh, current requests, understanding the, what the landscape looks like across LRSD in terms of those levels of requests, and ensuring that school leaders and teachers understand the process that is in place to meet the uh, expectations. Trustees, any questions on this one? All right, thank you. That takes us to accessibility plan updates. At our March 20th accessibility working group meeting, 
Uh, we reviewed um, information related to schools that have accessibility issues, some of our older schools without elevators, without um, uh, ramps in certain parts of the schools, and just talked through some, some logistical um, issues that we're uh, faced with with some of our facilities and, and discussed um, how we can support community and knowing what to expect when they come into our schools and enter our facilities based on some potential signage that will help people to plan for that. Uh, and so we talked through different um, opportunities that we would be able to communicate with, with people in those communities where there may be some concerns so that um, no one is surprised by, by different, uh, different situations. We also reviewed uh, policy um, ACE to determine if any training is going to be necessary. That's our accessibility pol um, policy. We reviewed outstanding item items from our previous meetings around signage for gender inclusive washrooms. We reviewed the number of um, washrooms that are uh, hope we're hoping will be on the agenda for this coming school year to see some renovations. Um, and continue to monitor which we have those uh, added. Uh, and then we're still working towards the expectations for the communications and information standard, looking at the remaining tasks that we have, looking around staff trainer leaders, um, and um, have begun to dig into the transportation standard. And just of note, we've added a member to the team. Our sport convener, Jordana Mill, has joined us. She brings another unique um, perspective when it comes to accessibility, when we think about sport and what that looks like across facilities. Okay. Any questions on this item? Thanks, uh, Darcy. 7.5, LRSD International Committee of Racial Discrimination. To you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, so I want to share with you that um, on March 21st, uh, teacher leader Don Claudio brought together a group of high school students. Uh, so high school students from each of our high schools were represented. And on this day of um, that calls for the elimination of racial discrimination, students participated in a variety of table conversations, discussing what issues they see taking place in our schools, as well as more broadly across um, our community. Uh, and uh, had the opportunity to interact with this team, Rwanda, who's one of the most anti-racist educator, um, along with Shelley Hopper, that is in the medical division. And the day of the time was well used, not long enough. The students want to get together again. And so we're planning for the next iteration of what that will look like. Um, but just profound, profound thoughts and ideas students as they think about uh, how they can contribute to a better world. Any questions on this item? So have next steps been established? Was that part of the conversation or is it like? Yeah, we're, so we're in the planning stages of a uh, time and date to bring students together again and to extend sort of invitation to other people in the community that would be beneficial to have in that space. Sweet, good for them. Trustee Sigurdsson? And the uh, International Day of Elimination of Racial Discrimination, is that something that's been around a long time or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's uh, the United, it, it uh, was established by the United Nations. The United, yes, of course. Okay. That makes sense. Thank you. I knew I heard of it, but I couldn't remember. And finally, from you again, uh, exhibits that uh, some students are working on next week yes. or this week. Sorry. So as you can see in my role, I have the opportunity to work <laughs> with students that are so committed to doing good work across community and across schools. And so the, um, again, coming from our divisional student advisory, uh, we had a student who brought forward um, a suggestion uh, after conversation around an awareness of sort of increased um, um, sexual harassment and, and assault. And if we look at data recently released by the uh, Canadian Child Protection Agency, we see that um, incidences such as these, especially in youth, have increased almost 18%. And so Esther Raj is the student uh, who's part of our National Student Advisory Board who uh, pitched this idea to the group. And so 
along with uh, an, another organization that she's part of that she spoke to about last year when she came here, uh, Voice for the Voiceless. Uh, we are hosting an exhibit uh, that is targeting uh, sexual, or in the, the focus is to inform people around um, sexual harassment and assault. Um, and the message being, no matter who you are, what you look like, what you wear, you have a right to be free from sexual violence. And so the exhibit at taking place at Glenlong Collegiate over the next two days is supported by a clinic here in Winnipeg. They will be on site as well as our divisional clinical services team. Uh, and a lot of thought has gone into ensuring that students, staff, and community are aware of the exhibit to ensure that safe spaces are available for anyone wanting to have conversation. As well, um, resource pamphlets have been provided, have been created and will be provided for people to take with them uh, so that uh, an ability to talk about a really tough subject and a very sensitive uh, topic uh, is being done, I think, in a very thoughtful way. And so I'm hopeful that it will be well received by you. I look forward to uh, hearing how it turns out. Mm -hmm. What some of the questions were maybe that they proposed to them. Christy Sigurdsson? Yeah, thank you again for all your information today. <laughs> yeah. Just to point out and to highlight um, how wonderful the Student Advisory Board, Divisional Student Advisory Board, is and what it's become and the members, how committed they are to um, making a better a better world and a better community for all of us. And I'm very proud of that um, of that organization. It's it's fairly new and um, anticipate even greater things from them. Fair warning, they want a seat at the table here. Yes. And yes. so expect that. That's a request to come sooner than later. Uh, that takes us to correspondence. We have some correspondence that we received from the department. Uh, which uh, everybody has seen in relation to um, some that we've uh, discussed here. I'm not sure if there was any questions around any of this. Great, seeing none, we will uh, see pieces of correspondence then. And then there was some correspondence sent by MSBA, uh, the e-bulletin, which comes out uh, monthly. Please take a look at that. Student Citizenship Awards that are coming up, and then a creative writing competition. We have no action items tonight, uh, so that takes us to public question period. We will start in the room. Mr. McGurry, any questions? Well, good, thank you. You had a good spring break, I hope. It's nice, yeah. Good. 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 Um, and we'll go to those joining us online. I'm not sure if there's any questions. If you kind of put your virtual hand up, we can, or just turn your mic on and post your question. All right, no questions this evening. Then that takes us to- Oh, sorry. Oh, sir. We did have one from okay. Charlene. Yes. Hi, Charlene, how are you? Hi, good, sorry, I wasn't quite fast enough. I was just texting with the other parent and caregiver community okay. members, just making sure they wanted me to ask the question still. Okay. Um, we were just wondering with the accessibility work that Darcy McCormick has been working on, thank you, first of all, for doing all of that work we really appreciate it um but we were just wondering kind of in the in term um how that information is going to be shared with our community because we were concerned about members who potentially are using the family center so maybe aren't part of the lrsd mailing list um due to the fact that like my children attend a school that is one of those older schools that is not accessible um to access in all areas so um, just wondering how some of that information might be shared to the wider community instead of just the families who may be currently attending. Thanks, Charlene, for the question. So some of the ways that we discussed um, doing so, um, in addition to information on school websites on, this, on the divisional external portal, we were discussing the pros and cons of signage at, at buildings as well as um, working with schools to identify um, any of those communication strategies that they use already and including that accessibility note in them so that it becomes just part of the regular practice of information about schools. 
Um, we, ha we do certainly have the accessibility section on the website, but um, all of these things are only useful if you know that they're there or you have a way of getting them. So those are some of the things that we've talked a little bit about, um, uh, but we're certainly open to other ideas. And, and as you know, Charlene, last year we had a community consultation around accessibility and uh, we have a plan uh, to reach out to community again this year. Uh, and so those would be important things to bring forward. And, and as I'm listening to you, I think we need to find a way to communicate sort of as, as we do here, but to maybe to post the minutes of our meetings on our website or to provide a little bit more information about some of the current things that we're working on so people know have that those regular updates as well. Yeah, that would be great because I know that sometimes people feel like we've mentioned it, but then it's stalled, knowing that it's not actually stalled, right? You guys are doing all that great work of continuing to work on it. But um, when we're not hearing the feedback, that's kind of the feeling that some folks are getting. So that would be great. And then I can always pass it along to our uh, parent and caregiver meetings that we host and uh, the meeting minutes that are shared out. So um, yeah, yeah, thank you. You know what else, Charlene, we could do is we could share um, the the pertinent minutes with um, school leaders, and then whether it's um, a PAC meeting or sharing group, however they communicate with uh, their community, that could be part of a regular sort of update in the same way that I provide here. They could pro provide that to their lo local school communities. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all the work on that. No worries. Thanks, Charlene. Thanks, Charlene. Any other questions? Are appearing? No, nothing. All right, that takes us to the end of our agenda. So we're adjourned this evening. Uh, trustees, I need some time with you. That's per the email I sent on the 25th. Uh, the rest of you are free. Have a good evening. Excuse the washer.